Welcome to the Chan 7. We have some changes coming up and I'm excited to share with y'all as we kick off our grade specific choices with our seventh grade picks for the 2023-2024 school year. Please stick around. dentist turned homeschool mom to five kids. We're in our eighth year of homeschooling and next year we'll have a seventh grader, a fifth grader, a third grader, a kindergartner, and a preschooler. Homeschooling has definitely been an adventure and it's nothing like dentistry. It's far more challenging but much more rewarding. I would have to say homeschooling has become my passion and I'm excited to have the opportunity to share it with you. We've had some bumps along the way, but we'd love for you to join in our journey. Seventh grade sounds like such a pivotal year to me. It's a year we'll have a teenager for the first time. If you have any advice for the soon to be mom of a teenager, please share. But we are going to trust that God has it all under control. Hi. Okay, everyone's coming in. Okay. Well, God obviously knew that we needed an easy one to homeschool for our first kid, or we probably would have given up years ago. Our oldest is so independent and motivated that it's rare for me to even have to help her with most of any of her school. Oh, you want to stay? Okay, let's just let like, Susanna stay. Thank you. We close the door. <laughs> our oldest is the one who we didn't even need a reading program for in order for her to start reading chapter books at five years old. Basically, I went over simple phonics with her and the Bob Buck readers and some of the free resources I found online, including Rhyme a Week and also Progressive Phonics. But by grade three, we felt that she could use some sort of a reading program, not necessarily for her to know how to read per se, but more so that she can get more reading comprehension. So we decided to try CLE's reading grade three, and she had loved it from the beginning. She loves to read, and these the stories in the readers are always so good, and the, they have such great moral values. And we have done CLE reading with her ever since she was in third grade. So this year we will be doing the grade seven CLE reading and the grade seven comes with five workbooks and each workbook has about 15 lessons and a student will read the stories from these readers and this is the reader for the seventh grade and then she will go through the assignments which include like a lot of vocabulary practice and questions about the readings and the, and the stories. And each light unit comes with two quizzes and a test. So if you want to grade your student and test them, they are right in the middle of your light units. And they're great to just gauge where your student is in their progress in learning. Here's, the, here's one of the tests. And they also have answer keys that go with these light, light units. And CLE is great to produce some independent students. So our daughter will just basically grade all her work on her own using these answer keys. So it kind of looks like this on the inside. And so that's it for our reading component. And for language arts, after years of doing CLE's language arts and also a year of the good and the beautiful, we are going to try Easy Grammar Plus. She probably would be perfectly fine and happy sticking with CLE's language arts and may even beg to go back to CLE, which is what happened when we switched over to the good and the beautiful. But she and I have decided to try Easy Grammar Plus for its approach on grammar in order to get a fresh perspective on how grammar is approached through Easy Grammar. Easy Grammar's lessons are short, 
So we thought this would be a good time for her to try it out since it will give her a chance to focus on other subjects like science, which you will be doing independently for the first time next year. Easy Grammar Plus is intended for 7th to 12th grade, but also it can also go into college. And thanks to our son, we had switched over from CLE language arts to easy grammar because for him, language arts was such a challenge. And so we'll see how it goes with our daughter. We'll see if she decides to switch back to CLE and she will definitely let me know. She's very honest about that. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> That's funny. While CLE reading does include some vocabulary, we are going to try Word Roots Level 1. The company was nice enough to send me the beginner level and also Level 1 to try for my honest review. I love connections and Word Roots seems to do a good job with taking words at their roots from their Greek and Latin origins and seeing how the meanings will change by adding on different prefixes and suffixes. Our daughter has tried Worldly Wise and Evan Moore vocabulary in the past, and she wasn't very thrilled with those, and I think she was having a hard time even retaining the, the vocabulary words um, because there wasn't much for connections between one lesson to the next, but Word Root seems to do a good job with that, where there's a lot of connections. Word Roots looks pretty simply laid out. And I think that the connections of dissecting the words will help with retention and re remembering the meanings. So I'm actually really thankful to try the program. I also have this vocabulary cartoons book. And initially it was intended for our rising seventh grader, but I was really excited. So I tried, I've started already, already incorporating it into our morning time. And I'm so glad I got it because the cartoons in this book and the links that go along with the vocabulary words are so fun and so well done to help to solidify the vocabulary meanings into memory. Even our littlest one, who is two and a half years old, remembers the memory links like, let's see, let me find it. Um, this one was her favorite. For accolade, it says, Jane and Jack received accolades for their lemonade. So she would just randomly say things like, that's right, accolades for their lemonade. So, we have been loving vocabulary cartoons. <laughs> we will no longer intentionally work on spelling and penmanship. Our daughter does great with those. So next we're gonna move on to writing. Yes, what's up? Ooh, I love you. Ooh, I love you. Writing is a subject that I least enjoy teaching. Accolades for their lemonade. Writing is a subject that I enjoy least teaching. Ouch. <laughs> but I think we're going to go with IEW Structure and Style Level B. But I can't get myself to come around to purchasing the program just yet because a couple of our students. Yes, you see. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Because a couple of our kids will be <laughs> because a couple of our kids will be doing the level A of structures. You did, but let me try to videotape. Let me record this. Thank you. <laughs> tickle, tickle. You have to go poop. Okay, let's go poop. Okay, we'll be back. Like I was saying, a couple of our kids will be doing the level A of IEW structure and style. And I can't imagine having two sets of long lectures going on in our school weeks. The lectures seem pretty time consuming and we're really not used to anything like that. But we are familiar with IEW structure and style since we have been doing the essentials program with classical conversations for the past three years. 
And I have actually considered trying a different program with our oldest. Uh, we had considered trying EIW, which is Essentials in Writing program. And we tried the free trial. We tried the, oh, bless you. But after trying the free trial, I wasn't so sure about the program because I had found, um, in my opinion, a pretty big error early on in the trial. So the first half of EIW is on grammar and the second half of the program is about writing. I was surprised to find an error in the free trial. Mr. Stevens teaches that when baking cookies is a prepositional phrase in the sentence, but when isn't even a preposition, but rather a clausal opener. And I have let the company know and they are correcting that error, but to think that there was an error in the trial made me wonder if there could be other errors. And if I'm going to be hands off with our daughter, I wanna make sure that we can trust the program to teach reliable information. So we'll see what happens with our writing, but right now it will be IEW Structure and Style Level B. In the past, we have tried literature guides from Memorial Press, like this one, uh, Cricket in Times Square, but our daughter did not enjoy doing them. She is an avid reader, and for her, if any of her readings feel more like school, it takes the fun out of it for her. And she is very much readily will tell me about the book she reads, but if it has something attached, like school attached to it, being about school, then it just isn't fun for her. But I may try what's called lit logs. I initially came across lit logs through Sarah from Everyday Homeschooler. Sarah has a great video explaining what a lit log is, and I have her video linked down below. She explains it so much better than I ever could. Basically, the student chooses a book from a set of books and keeps a reading journal where every entry has an illustration and a written narration. The illustration can be as simple as copying the cover of the book or an illustration within the book or drawing a picture of what they envision as they read the book. The written narration can involve answering who their favorite character was in the book and why, what was one of their favorite parts in the book, what they learned from the book, or just simply retelling what they read. And depending on the age of the child or circumstance, it could be as simple as tracing an illustration and orally telling the story, or having a much more involved illustration and having a several page essay. I love the flexibility of lit logs and it'll be fun to see how much the children progress over time and how much they grow in their writing skills and just even art skills. I've already shared in a language arts video that our daughter will be going through The Fallacy Detective. It looks like a great book that is easy to follow and helps to develop discernment of good and bad arguments and also helps to train in defending one's beliefs and faith. So we are excited to try this book. For math, we'll be going with Saxon 8-7. After having completed primary Singapore math all her life, we have decided to go with Saxon. Um, and I have a recent video on math that explains a little bit more of our change. And I'll have that video linked down in the description box. I've actually always shied away from Saxon math because of the textbook feel of the program. But since Singapore math doesn't go all the way through high school, we have decided to switch her over to Saxon math, along with Nicole the Math Lady videos. But I do have to credit Singapore math for making our kids really strong in math. I could tell you that our kids are faster at solving math problems than I am. For science, she will be independently going through Apologia's Exploring Creation with General Science, which I think will be fun since it pretty much covers every area of science, like geology, marine science, physics, chemistry, and earth science. Unlike Apologia's Explorer series that focuses on one area of science for an entire year. And that's one of the reasons why the Explorer series of Apologia 
didn't really go well for our family because it was a little too much for our family to be focusing on one area of science for an entire year. But this general science looks a lot really fun and I'm really glad I got the new version of the program because the pictures look very inviting. And as usual, Apologia does a great job with including a schedule that is clearly laid out and they put that in their notebook. So the general science, it, it is divided into 14 modules in 33 weeks. And this schedule for me, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. And I was pretty intimidated about starting this program for our daughter initially, but after looking through the program, I'm actually really excited for her to start and get into it. This program by far is our biggest expense so far. It was like about $245 through christianbook.com. And it includes the, we also got the lab kit that goes with it. But I think it's gonna go great. Normally I wouldn't buy a whole entire experiment kit, but everything is already included and so easily organized and laid out that um, I'm not too worried about how it's gonna go. On to history. Growing up, I didn't care much for history and I actually hated history classes. I felt like I was memorizing a bunch of dates and events in order to take a test and to soon forget them. I couldn't tell you much from what I had learned, even though I did well in the classes. But now that I'm relearning history with my kids, I love history and I'm so fascinated by it. We had loved Mr. History, but felt like we could take a little break from it and try not grasses from Adam to us. And I actually have a video linked that explains the switch better. The history is usually a family subject for us. So our, we're gonna keep it as a family subject. And our, so our daughter will be joining us for history and not be doing it independently. So I am excited to dig in. I already shared in a recent electives video that our daughter will be picking up Spanish since she'll need a foreign language to graduate from high school. We probably would have chosen Korean or Chinese since my husband's and my ethnicities are Korean and Chinese, but we decided to go with Spanish because it was more practical for where we live. So she will be using these Carson de Losa books that I got from Amazon. And we'll be using these books along with Master Books Academy's Beginning Spanish for Families. So Masterbooks Beginning Spanish for Families is an 18-month subscription. And after having checked out the free materials, it looks like so, so much fun, very immersive. The instructor is super funny. And the program is divided into 12 units with 10 to 20 minute videos. And so thanks to our oldest, the entire family will get a chance to learn Spanish, even though initially we were not planning on doing it as a family. And here's the other book, Carson de Lisa book. But I do plan on continuing to do some Korean in our morning time using the Tuttle flashcards. But with for our oldest, I'm including the Korean Grammar and Use for Beginners book that I got through Amazon. And it comes with a CD and I thought for her, I felt like it was time for her to get into more of the grammar and conversation. And this book is intended for people who want to learn Korean independently. And since I haven't found a Korean program for a homeschooling family that I thought would be good. So I am hoping that this works out. Hopefully these choices won't end up taking too much of our daughter's time where she doesn't have time for the things that she loves to do like reading, crocheting, and knitting. The great thing about homeschooling is that we have the flexibility and time to be able to do more of the things that we enjoy. 
So if our choices don't give a little wiggle room for those fun things, then we may have to readjust. But fortunately, our daughter is a really good time manager. So I'm not too worried about her being able to squeeze in what she can. And of course, she doesn't have to do every, every subject every single day, or she doesn't have to do so much of one subject every day. And so she could probably figure out that and figure out her own rhythm and pattern and um, what works for her. And another thing is that she is totally honest with what materials she likes and does not like. So I'm sure she will tell me her honest opinions about them. That pretty much sums up our choices for our seventh grader. If you have tried any of these resources, please share your experiences. And if you'd like to see any specific flip throughs, although I plan to do some reviews later on on pretty much all of our materials, um, please share in the comments as well. I'll have our fifth, third, kindergarten and preschool picks videos coming up soon. And also I'll be sharing our end of the year reflections and a review of the read alouds that we've had throughout the year coming up. Please don't forget to support our channel by liking and subscribing. That will help YouTube and me know what sort of content to keep coming. Have an awesome day and please join me again soon. <laughs> EIW teaches grammar for the first half portion and then writing for the second half. So it's gonna <laughs> come over here. Thank you. Oh, you don't want to get knocked over. Please.